Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. Very groundbreaking guest today for my show here because I've had over 80 guests now, but never an actual medical doctor until now. Uh, if you're an MD, longtime MD reader, you recognize his name. He wrote for MD for a few years, and he's uh, you know he's been involved in our community for quite some time. This is Dr. Thomas O'Connor, aka the Anabolic Doc, joining us from Connecticut. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much, Ron. Very happy to be here. It's been a while. So uh, I want to start with the question, anabolic doc. How did you become the anabolic doc? Well, I guess from the grace of God, you know, beyond that, oh boy, way back, I'm a board certified internal medicine doc. I'm living here in, in Hartford, Connecticut, West Hartford, Connecticut. Went to UConn School of Medicine for residency training. And I've been a power lifter my whole life, you know, kind of lifting weights and training hard and myself and uh, living kind of underground and living two, two, two lives, I guess. And then I became a medical physician and treating uh, general practice medicine and men started coming to me, men that are using anabolic steroids. And, and I, in the beginning, I was kind of concerned and worried. I don't want to deal with these guys. Right. You know, so I, you know, naturally, and, and I thought, well, you know, maybe endocrinologists understand these guys because they're, they're experts in testosterone, urologists, and so on and so forth. So as time went on, more and more came. It was a brotherhood only. Hmm. You know, maybe because I was in the gym myself, the deadlifting pseudo sumo 405 for 20 something reps, you know, at that time and kind of bleeding at the knees and stuff, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then over, I think it was 2008, I went home one night after seeing, you know, more and more men are just coming in. Like, I, they just found me. I wasn't even advertised. I wasn't, I was just Tom O'Connor, Dr. Tom O'Connor. Intro mouth. medicine. Word of mouth. And I went home one night, Ron. I had a glass of wine and I said, I got to promote this. So I went on to you know, GoDaddy yep. and I started thinking of names, right? So for 12 bucks, I bought anabolicdoc.com. <laughs> We're done with the story, and then I took a picture of myself, and remind you, remember, I'm a powerlifter, you know, but don't, I don't hate and discriminate on any of the, the, the brothers of iron or the sisters of iron. Yeah. So at that time, I took a picture of myself with my glasses, kind of like you, and I put yeah. the glass, I put, and I sent it to uh, Powerlifting USA, hmm. which I had some contacts there at that time, great magazine, unfortunately it's gone away, hmm. and... Um, uh, Mike Lambert is the owner, was the chief editor, and the and he's basically the publisher of that magazine. And I loved Powerlifters and been doing it for since I was thirteen. So I I said, can you run an ad? I paid for it. Wow. I said, can you run an ad for me, uh, for five hundred bucks? And here's a picture, and it said, if you're lifting weights, and you want to stay healthy and strong and healthy, yeah. My tagline, I'm a doctor coming to see me. Phone blew up. Wow. So initially, was it mostly guys from men from the Connecticut Hartford area? Or no, 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 no. The first guy that came, and I want to be careful with HIPAA laws, was uh, Texas and Virginia. I still got one of them today. And they came all the way up. Wow. Powerlifters. And they came up in the middle of the winter with work boots and shorts on. <laughs> and I, you know, one guy was, one guy was from, uh, he had like a, this Louisiana accent. I still to this day can't understand what he talks, you know, it's a sweet guy, yeah. you know? So, and that was it. And then within, within a few months or maybe six months, um, history is that Mike Lambert called the boss, Steve Blackman. Yeah. Blackman called me. I was on, I was on the soccer field with my, my daughter at that time, about five or six. And he said, you're the anabolic doc. Is that really true? Can you bench 500 pounds? Yeah. You're actually a doctor. Can you write? Can you write? Yeah. <laughs> so I start, I wrote for three years. I wrote the column, Anabolic Doc. And the great news is you're coming back. Yes. Game so, on, man. Finally, because we, have, we haven't had a medical doctor giving this type of advice in the magazine for quite a while now. And, you know, bro science is great, but it's not real. We tend to get, unfortunately, most people who use get most of their info from people with absolutely no medical training. Sometimes they get the info from their dealer or something on, you know, how to do stuff. But I will get well, into that. I don't, want to, I don't hate. I don't discriminate. But the truth is, I'm a physician. I really want to stay humble about that. And I 
just want to spread the word and want to make this come above ground, people are using steroids should be seen. They, they should have access to medical care. We, we should do this. That leads me to my next question. You know, so many physicians out there, they're either really ignorant about steroids, how they're used, and, you know, potential problems with that may arise and what how people can use them a little more safely, or they just want a hands-off approach. They don't want, they don't want, maybe it's a liability thing, but they don't want to have anything to do with it. They, they don't want to give you any advice. Uh, they'll just tell you, don't use them, don't use them, stop using them. And they're not, and like you said, people are going to use them anyway. You know, you're, you're not going to take someone who's been using them for 10, 20 years or more and just tell them stop using and they're going to stop using. Why, why is there such a stigma with all the, a lot of these doctors? I'm sure not all of them, but a lot of the doctors I've heard about and that I've encountered. Well, th this is, that, that's the million dollar question, Ron. Hmm. So the way I saw it 10 years ago was exactly this. Why? This is, these are medical agents. These are men that are essentially suffering from medical complications to cardiovascular complications, depression, and we know the most common complication is, you just said it, after 10 years or years of using androgenic steroids, you're going to have a medical condition that we well know now that's referenced and in my book. Please get my book and you'll see the chapters. And the main chapter is anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism, Ron. Oh, yeah. When a man uses testosterone derivatives, androgens, long enough the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis will disconnect. Mm -hmm. When that man, there's withdrawal. The, the feds last year put an, an increased warning on testosterone for withdrawal and abuse. Mm -hmm. Now, Ron, and I'm flattered and I'm humbled that I am the anabolic doc. I'm the first doctor openly to have the guts, and I paid for it, but I'm okay to, to, to say, these are underserved people, yeah. and the fact that they're using elite, these are illegal agents. These are illegal agents. I, I, we take care of heroin users. Right. Yeah. We take care of people that are using cocaine. There's people that are transgender that are suffering. There's people, this is now a time of compassion, and it's an underserved group of people. There's millions, and that's why my book had to come out, and I've been writing. I've never given a blessing, Ron, on steroid users. Yeah. And I don't profile, and that's discriminatory. If someone's using an agent from alcohol to smoking to food and obesity, not to mention drugs, you, you, they, how would you discriminate on that person? So these people, unfortunately, have been living in a vacuum. It's called bro science, and essentially treating themselves with, with unsound practices and non-supported medical uh, 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 theories. Yeah. So how can you do this? How can this? Now, this is not a blessing to steroid use. And Ron, as we come, as I come back, I have my, I have an agenda. My agenda is to get more doctors involved, to spread the word on that. Don't kick them out of the room. Look at their CBC. Look at their liver function. Have you seen my videos? I'm reviewing autopsies. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, has there been, have you had like a lot of backlash from your peers in the medical community? None. None, really. All support. Wow, that, that's actually very refreshing to hear. I'm glad to hear that because I, I expected you would have been, you know, sort of looked down upon because you're treating these horrible steroid users, you know? Doctors, in the beginning, I, I had actually, it was just a, n nothing on the radar. It was just, it was just basically, okay. And then over time, now I have doctors sending me patients from after a bypass surgery, after a stent placed, there are cardiologists in this country, because steroids definitely cause heart disease. Yeah. We can get into those mechanisms when you start looking at my articles, and I'm just going to keep writing the same articles, just, just different iterations of the articles and different verses and different editions. Yeah. So doctors send me patients out of the cath lab after they have a bypass surgery. Here's Dr. O'Connor's card, or you know what, the anabolic doc, and a lot of the guys say, I know about the doc. Well, you should go see him now, because you know I, we just bypassed your heart, and you're probably on testosterone or androgens, and you should get help for that. Hmm. So you know, these doctors, they, they obviously send these patients to you because they know you have an area of expertise that they're just not prepared 
they don't have the knowledge and, and the background to really work with these people on that level. What are some of the biggest information gaps or misconceptions that you see among other physicians when it comes to this area, steroid use? Wow. Well, let, let's, let's break it right down. So anabolic steroids, what are they? They're hormones, correct? Yeah. They're, they're derivatives of testosterone, correct? Yes. Anabolic androgenic steroids. They've been around since when? 1930s? Yeah. So? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the 19, 1930s, 1940s. I have a book. Hold, let me show you this book. You ever see this book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I've never actually read it, but yeah. Bill Llewellyn. Yeah. So I contributed. I'm a, I'm a contributing author down there. So I got a lot of books coming out, which is great. Great for Bill and me. And Bill's a great guy. Yeah. So be, in the absence of of doctors that are, that that are real doctors and scientific experts. They've, they've, they've blown off and they've never looked into what these drugs really are uh, beyond endocrinology. So endocrine experts, those are the doctors are, that are experts in theory on, on giving diagnosis of low testosterone and treating men with low T. Yeah. But, but they've not been involved with this and they're coming on board now, by the way. Mm -hmm. So endocrinologists should know about steroids. But they're, and again, these are my peers, Ron. I never want to disparage or disrespect. I'm an evidence-based physician. I'm, I'm speaking from evidence. They're not involved in it. They have not been involved in it. There's a few experts. I'll, we could cite Dr. Kaniyama, Dr. Pope, Dr. Bashane at Harvard, and these are my colleagues. Yeah. And you could read their data. So it's been out there, Ron. But now, in a political correct fashion, physicians, in a good way, are coming out to help. When a man or a woman is suffering from steroid-related depression or heart complications, uh, gynecomastia, sexual issues, how, why would a physician not care for those? They, they haven't understood it, and that's my job now to educate those, uh, those physicians. And I've created, I've created a new subspecialty of internal medicine, which is anabolic medicine. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I'm just curious if you know, I was a patient of a, a gentleman, I wonder if you're familiar with him, Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler? I know him very well over okay. at Boston Men's Health. He's an expert too, very nice. Yeah. So again, so of course we've, we've talked several times. So he's a proponent of something called testosterone saturation, hmm. indicating that does, prostate, does testosterone and antigens cause prostate cancer? Yeah. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to write a lot of articles. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lot of fun. Dr. Morgenthaler, very interesting. Okay, uh, so let's get into the book before we launch into other crazy things. Thank you. The book is Steroids in America. Uh, what's the subtitle? Healing? America on Steroids, America on it's steroids. a time to heal. Okay, so what inspired you to write this book? So, probably half of the chapters in the book are edited versions of the articles I wrote for you. And, and that's some of the content. Of course, there's, there, there are my, my educational academic chapters on anabolic, androgenic, steroid-induced hypogonadism. Yeah. And those are my academic chapters that are well-referenced. And, and obviously, the world's going to receive this book in about, about two weeks when it's going to be finally distributed. And the impetus for this is the impetus for the anabolic doc, Ron. We need, we need to, to bring this into light. That there are between four and eight million documented in the studies anabolic steroid users in America, forget outside America. And, and that, that's probably an inaccurate number. Dr. Pulp has even stated that himself at Harvard. Sorry, it sounds low to me, yeah. So, it, it, but, I, but I have to use data, Ron. I have to be, I'm an evidence-based, my peers, they do respect me because I don't speak from anecdotal, just, I speak, I have to speak from evidence-based data, correct? Yeah. I mean, I want physicians to watch this. I want them to say, look, Dr. O'Connor is board certified. I maintain a board certification in the American Board of Internal Medicine. I also am on staff at University of Connecticut School of Medicine. So you have to be respected by your peers. And the problem, Ron, hmm. the problem is, and kind of going back to your other question, is that why aren't doctors doing this? Because let's just face it, these are smart guys. Yeah. Maybe some of them are arrogant. 
And maybe maybe they're arrogant sometimes. They're seen as being arrogant, but they actually when they're not. Maybe they're not arrogant. Maybe they're just they don't know any of this, so they don't want to get involved. Right. And then when they do get involved, who do they see? Bro, science guys. Yeah. Ron. That, that's that's who provides most it's of the information. It's yeah. embarrassing. So when I so Ron when I started getting involved with bro science because I was kind of one of them. Yeah. I thought I want to go to medical school. I, I want to be trained, in, and I better train in the camp of the best. Hmm. I better be a board-certified internist to understand this, and then I'll take it from there. And that's that was my dream. Hmm. So who is this book really targeted to? Who, who really needs to read this book? Wow, great. Media. Hmm. Everyone. Media. Not just, not just, you know, funny enough, the guys who will read it will really enjoy it are the steroid users themselves. Yeah. Because I'm writing cool stuff and my writing, you know, and Blackman said to me, you know, in 2012, Tom, if you could, if you could integrate and marry the ability to turn people on with your writing with evidence-based support, you're going to be, you're going to be successful. Yeah. So, so, but again, turn them on, you know, and there's a lot of doctors that can write boring articles, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, so I kind of smashed you in the face with, you remember my articles? I mean, oh, they were great. I it, liked was, them a lot. it was fun yeah. stuff. We're going to go back to that. I want to maybe tone it down a little bit. Maybe not. I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> They'll be cool. They'll be interesting. They will be evidence-based. They're going to be real articles about what happens to steroid users medically. Hmm. Cause that's what I do. So, and the, you know, these physicians though, Ron, they, they're coming around because they want to see there's evidence, there's, there's numbers and there's truth. And then there's the, the, the audience for this are going to be mothers, fathers, physicians, politicians, media people. We need to spread this, Ron. Come on now, Ron. Yeah, and no, and we can get into later on about, you know, what's happening with the deaths and the exp – we need to, to tone down – I'm not a prima donna. You know, we need to tone down the steroid use. And we need to talk about it openly, Ron, about what it's doing to America, to, to our boys, our young men, not to mm. mention women. Mm. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, what I wanted to get into next, because you had two of the best, you know, after the autopsy results for Dallas and Rich Piana were released, there was a flood of videos all over the Internet, and none of these people commenting on it were actually qualified to comment on the data that was in these reports. Uh, your videos on your YouTube channel, which is Dr. Thomas O'Connor. What, what's your YouTube channel? MetabolicDoc.com. Anabolic Doc. Is it anabolic it's, well, it's Metabolic Doc and Anabolic Doc is the site. They, yeah. they, the Metabolic Doc is the main site. The Anabolic Doc is a page domain. Yeah. And if you go to the home page, it's, it's my YouTube link there. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, those were the two most insightful analyses of those autopsies that were that were actually done on YouTube out of the... There were probably hundreds of them all together, you know. Thank you. Between the major players, the big YouTube stars, and everyone had to kick in their two cents to try to get some views out of it. But you actually went over these in great detail. So, you know, obviously people can look at your videos for the full analysis, and I encourage them to do so. But uh, question, when you first saw the results of Dallas's autopsy, you know, were you really shocked, or, were you, or was it sort of in line with what you were expecting to see based on him passing away at such a young age? Well, both, you know, and, I, and I've had a lot of patients, you know, suffering, obviously, for complications of steroids. So part of me wasn't shocked when I saw the heart, and he essentially died from a heart attack. But when I saw that the lungs were massively enlarged, hmm. when I saw that the liver was so enlarged, and just that everything was so hypertrophied, if you will, yeah. I mean, it just, you know, and what's the etiology? It's multifactorial. I mean, it's the it's the combined use of, of all these drugs and insulin. Yeah, if you want to say in the end of the day, insulin and growth growth hormone mm -hmm. on the levels he took and his levels were his testosterone levels. I don't know if you know this and I, I kept it out of the initial video because I didn't think it was going to be relevant and it would detract from the actual the concept of the video was his testosterone levels apparently were 55,000. Wow. So what's, what's normal? 300 to 1,000? Okay, so yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, so a thousand is I mean, normal for that's high normal for a you know a, an adult past his younger years, right? Yeah. So he was fifty-five thousand. So, I'm not kidding. Wow. You know, so 
I mean, clearly. I mean, and the guys, you know, all the great stuff. He's a he's great genetics. The guys, and you know, great guy. And it was who can't? This is like this is a twenty six year old man. Yeah. Who, and he was coughing. Remember, he had memory stumbled, and he had that near couple collapse. He collapsed. On stage. He did collapse on stage. Okay, and and again, I don't care about the haters and stuff. I mean, haters are going to hate. I could care less. I'm a science guy. I'm an evidence based doctor, and in my heart is the most important thing of what I consider and what I what my compassion is you know he he almost collapsed supposedly he went and saw a doctor or somewhere mm-hmm. and he said he had uh, pulmonary complications then and his heart was enlarged at that point it's just it's like did they tell him did he not do you know what to do could you imagine his lungs were enlarged yeah okay I, I've never seen I've now and rich piano actually didn't have much heart disease. You can't argue the autopsy report. Wow. It said he had minimal coronary artery disease. Wow. Dallas had massive. Now, and they're 20 years apart. So what do you attribute that to? Is it, do you think, the amounts he was using? It's multifact, Ron, it's multifactorial, pal. Yeah. It, 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 it's his genetics. But, I mean, for that's more for, like, a piano guy. Piano probably had great genetics not to have heart disease. Right. When you put all the stuff together... And we could talk about it all independently. Anabolic steroids, how do they work uh, as far as disease? When you go over the line, do they, they lower HDL. That's not good. They, they can increase LDL. They, can mm-hmm. call, they definitely cause left ventricular hypertrophy. This is all my crazy stuff, right? But it's not crazy. Dr. Bagish at, Har- at Harvard, Dr. Dr. Aaron Bagish is a cardiologist at Harvard, American College of Cardiology. He put out last year, about a year ago today, he put an article out saying anabolic steroids cause LVH. Hmm. Ron, L- I'm at my desk right now. Yeah. LVH. If you enlarge your heart, <laughs> so that's steroids. You can have an enlarged heart because you're hypertensive and you're getting older and you have genes for it. Yeah. But then you add that dose dependently to insulin, IGF alpha. What what else? All the I mean, steroids, insulin, and growth factors. Yeah. I mean, we gotta talk about it, folks. So you know, the million dollar question with Dallas, and I know there's no real clear cut answer on this, but especially in light of the fact that he did that have a serious health scare, he, you know, he passed out on stage, went down, and he was vomiting backstage, and he was coughing, and, you know, this was a guy who, his health didn't seem to be that, that, he didn't seem very healthy, and Sean Ray called him out on it, and they wanted Sean Ray fired, it was a big to-do, but then, you know, in retrospect now, all those warnings and foreshadowing has turned out true. Do you think his death could have been prevented had he made a bigger deal out of what was going on and taken more care to see how his body so, was? So when guys come in, so if he if he had a full medical evaluation, including an echocardiogram, mm-hmm. not to mention CT scans of the chest and in the, in, in the abdomen and pelvis, if anyone ever thought to do that, or vital signs, or imagine his blood work. Yeah. I mean, so if you just did basic things, and I do this calcium score, so another thing I do all day long is I assess if the arteries, coronary artery, coronary artery, open various degrees and then blocked. Mm. So men and men have this early anyway, just being American. Mm. And number one cause of death is coronary disease. So he accelerated all these things, and no one can argue me. It's inarguable. Right. Read the autopsy report. Forget the politics, people. So what do we do? What would have happened? That, that was some good questions, people. You know, the questions, I don't know, there's so many hundreds of questions. I try answering stuff, but then I have to give up. I'm just too big. I mean, I'm so happy that I've overloaded right now, but I try to get back to all these questions. But in the end of the day, what could have happened? You might have saved his life, obviously, but what would be the answer? Please, sir, stop doing steroids. Mm-hmm. Let's wean. Let's wean you. So you don't have 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 a weaning, excuse me, have a withdrawal uh, crisis. Right. So we can wean you with ancillary drugs, HCG, the Clomid, right, the Novadex, which is which is the classic PCT cycle, which is true, which is Llewellyn, which is Dr. Michael Scally. Shout out to Michael Scally, who's really the first anabolic doc that pushed the edge and lost his license, and he's thrown out of the country. Wow. So and and uh, he he bad politics for him, bad timing. Maybe he went over the board and, and gave more than weaning doses. I, I don't know, but he's a bright man. That's a bright doctor, Michael Scally. So uh, getting back on board with this, I mean, stop the steroids and start treating and stabilizing his enlarged heart, 
his enlarged liver, and his large lungs. It is possible. It is so many guys. It's, he would have been dead anyway. I mean, but it's, it doesn't mean we don't treat someone. No. It's possible that that age he could have been stabilized, and you you have regression of the disease. Hmm. I mean, so yes, as a, from a medical standpoint, I mean, for that cardiomyopathy that he had, yeah, or the enlarged. I mean, oh my God, it's what a great question. The the concern happens is just what can we do to learn from it? And God, I mean, the guy's family. What can we do to learn from it, Ron? Ron, all these, let me ask you a question. What are sure. we going to do with these massive kids, all these kids that are doing insulin? And the, can we talk about it, Ron? Uh, you talk about whatever you want. I mean, <laughs> that's that's the trend now is, you know, I, I see it as just a sign of the times is instant gratification in all aspects. Technology, you know, these kids, my kids, they've all grown up with everything's right there at their fingertips immediately, and they don't want to wait for anything. And, you know, I see it carrying over into the bodybuilding world with kids in their early late teens early 20s to mid 20s they're in such an incredible rush to become pro bodybuilders and to go from you know 200 pounds to 300 pounds uh, they're doing crazy crazy things to do it because they just they want it now and you know I don't I, I fear for this I fear for their health in the future I think I you know obviously it's just my layman's opinion but I think we're gonna see some serious serious issues with this generation of young bodybuilders over the next 10 to 20 years i mean we ha i mean i think and people criticize you guys are older now doc you know you had your day well i really, really didn't have my day i mean i'm not going to say i didn't try a little of this and try a little of that but i was scared yeah. and i'm 53 years old and i'm i'm humble to say that i'm in good health and i want to i want to live to 110. wow <laughs> But I mean, so I live better through chemistry, you know, cardiovascular medical chemistry and so on and so forth. And, you know, staying really acute and staying in great shape and watching and, you know, using things like little ACE inhibitors and statins and all these crazy drugs, right? Yeah. So, and I feel great and I want to provide that, you know, in some medium, of course, through you guys with articles, because I want to spread this to the world. Why shouldn't you? Yeah. But we have to address the body dysmorphia too. Hmm. Well... Yeah, what would you like to say about that? Because that's, I think that's been part of bodybuilding from the very beginning of the sport. You know, my book is co-written, or at least the, there's an editorial by Dr. Kathleen Hoekstra, who's a PhD in um, social worker. She's a, a clinical psychologist, yeah. and she wrote the foreword uh, of this article of this book. And she's interested in why do men want to do this hmm. at all? And when they start taking risks with their health, wow, how powerful is that? And there's not 20 of them anymore. There's millions and millions. It's But right now, Ron, it's the lemmings. Remember the lemmings going into the sea? Sure. <laughs> I'm all going. He's going. I'm going. Boston Lloyd's going. I'm going with him. <laughs> I mean, again, Boston Lloyd, great guy, right? He's the first guy to be open. Right. And 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 tell and I, again, I'm trying to be, huh, I'm trying to be a you know a YouTube political correct guy, so I don't get I'll get hate mail from this, which is all, which is fine. Everyone everyone's gonna hate on something. Don't worry. <laughs> so so you know, but I try to think, Ron. I mean, you're a dad, right? Yeah. I'm a dad. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, what are we gonna do? Like, do you do one steroid? Is that okay with classic bodybuilding? Because there'll be steroids involved. Of course there are. But is it okay? Um, again, I'm thinking out loud. Is it okay to do less steroid? Guys, we're going to back it down a little bit. Well, you know that some guys are not going to back it down because depending on the genetics and the way they train and what they want, like you said, yeah. how available, how how fast they want it, they're still going to use a lot of test, a lot of trend, D-ball, Anadrol, insulin, they're going to use all this stuff. I just yeah. want to provide a medical medium support and a, and a media, an outlet to, oh, I'm super liberal on the social side hmm. of, of people are going to do drugs. They're, they're going to have sex. Look at Holland. They, 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 they call, it's called the red light district. Yeah. If you're for it or against it, they, they say, these are, we're human beings, we're people, we're going to do these things. How, should we regulate it somehow? I'm not saying that America should regulate steroids. I don't want to lose my medical license. Yeah. I disagree with that. I, I don't want that. Hmm. But I open an open discussion, and I want to have a forum, and I want to talk to you guys about this. 
invite Bill. Well, let's have an open forum called the first annual Congress of steroids. Hmm. of anabolic steroids, and it's me, it's Bill Llewellyn, it's going to be a pro bodybuilder, who, Ronnie Coleman, you know, Jake Cutler, one of these guys, whoever has the balls to come. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll have doctors coming, and we're going to have a real Congress forum, open, hmm. we'll invite the European guys, whoever else wants to come, and we're going to talk about it, and I'm the moderator, hmm. you can come too, maybe maybe MD wants to do this. I'm sure, we'd, like to make a I'm sure we'd love to tape it, sure. Absolutely. Why don't we do it? Why don't, who's scared of this? Who's scared of it? Why don't we talk about it openly? These are our children. There's millions, maybe 20 million people yeah. in America. I don't know. Women are using steroids. I'm just thinking out loud. What are we? What's going on here, folks? Yeah. It's hidden, though. Who's not talking about the gorilla in the room now or the elephant? Who's an elephant or a gorilla? Who cares? Uh, it's, a, it's an elephant, but yeah. <laughs> So you know, you say you don't want to, you don't want them regulated and legalized for adults, but you know, at the same time, I, my theory, and I'll, I'd like your comment on this, is that a lot of the problems that these guys are, all the users are having, uh, are partly because what we have access to is underground gear, which wow. it's tainted, it's underdosed, it it might not be what it's supposed to be on the bottle, and I think you know from talking to so many guys. If I ask them, why are you on five grams of shit a week? And they'll say, well, I don't know how much is in it. It might really only wow. be a gram. So that's why I'm using five grams. Wow. And, you know, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. When you don't know and you want to be sure that you're getting enough, you'll just take a ton because you can't be confident in what you're getting. Whereas if it was regulated and you were getting it from Walgreens, 200 milligrams is going to be 200 milligrams. Well, and again, I can't support that I, I can't support a bill that's going to come out and say, let's regulate and make steroids uh, 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 regulated like medical marijuana. I, I want to be careful and say, I don't, I'm not, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm looking for an open discussion. If it leads to that in 20 years or 10 years or 100 years, it's not me. I'll, I'll be far gone. Yeah. So, but that reminds me of this. When I talk to the, 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 some of the strong men or someone who's using growth hormone, I say, well, how do you know you're, you're, you're using, you're getting growth hormone. Oh, I dose it until I can't move and my I have carpal tunnel. <laughs> and, then, and then I know that the, the blue caps from China yeah. are right on, man. Yeah, I mean, isn't that, isn't that sad commentary, though? I don't, I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you what I see, what I hear. Oh, I, I hear all the same things, especially growth hormone is so expensive, it's the temptation to fake it or sell either fake growth or very underdosed growth. I mean, I'm sure many, many dealers, much, wow. I, I would, I can't es estimate, but a lot of the stuff out there is crap, which is unbelievable. God and that whole IGF, IGF's a whole other can of worms. That's a whole other can of worms. I remember I talked to Rich, you know, I mean, I love Rich, Rich Piano. What, I mean, of course, I was one of many friends, you know, where Rich was touched so many people and that's such a tragedy, such a brilliant sweetheart. What an incredible man. Yeah. Unfortunately, he had biodysmorphia, and he did these things to himself, and he had other issues, and he passed away. But I mean, that that one of the richest videos about the legit IGF one versus the not. My God, that's amazing to me. Yeah. To, just to touch on Rich for a second, um, it seems from when you went over the the autopsy results in the video that his death really couldn't be attributed directly to steroid use. What what exactly do you think? Happened? No, yeah. So so his his video, if I remember correctly, it's well, it's it was in the summertime, right? So yeah. his his autopsy, they they it's very interesting. They there was no conclusive, uh, there was no conclusive cause of death. Hmm. Now is politics involved in this? I don't know. They they lost his blood work, you know, in the ER somehow yeah. for the tox screen. Right. I don't. I, it's, it's not my patient. I don't. It's not my. I don't work in that hospital. I'm not that. And, and I'm not putting down the hospital. And uh, the, the paramedics and the first responders are awesome. Hmm. So God bless those people. So they're just doing a great job, and no one's getting rich in that field. Let me tell you. So, so we want to, never want to disparage them at any point. They're just the messengers. Those are just the angels. Right. So you know. Drug you? I mean, he 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 had an arrhythmia. He he syncopized either from his lungs, from his brain, or from his heart. And when he hit the floor, sooner or later, his heart stopped beating, hmm. and no one could. He had an ischemic brain injury. Hmm. 
no one can argue it. That's the scientific standpoint. And the guy, when the guys came out of the scene, depending on what his girlfriend said or what she did with her, her CPR or not, he uh, at that time already had probably massive brain injury. And hmm. but they got the heart cooking again. Hmm. So and, and that's that's my detail understanding years myself of working in hospitals and being an internist, working in the ICU. I mean, so when you see it, you have to do it on an A, B, C, airway, breathing, cardiac. You have to take him a very, and then looking at the autopsy report, he died really in the end because he, he had um, a bad pneumonia and he was sick. Hmm. But his, his brain, it appeared, he, he was a, a noxic, massive obnoxic brain injury, which we know happens when someone loses perfusion to the head because the heart is not pumping for a, for a prolonged period of seven minutes five seven ten minutes maybe longer for him and then you're you're brain dead wow. and then you're putting this the, the coma and we don't need to no one no one could argue these are facts that were on the autopsy yeah. i assume the autopsy was correct and then you move on but was it, was it from cocaine induced uh heart attack or what did he do too much insulin and pass out did it was it did he have a huge dose of opioid and he crashed yeah it's all multifactorial, and does it really matter? He's he's dead. Now. Just like with Dallas, nothing's going to bring them back. No, so. no, but but they were both obvious steroid users, and based on no, based on the, the 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 support, based on the autopsy report, Rich had an enlarged heart, and Rich said that he had some kidney issues, and they talked about the details of the kidney. And was that because he's two weeks the autopsy, the kidney report, the kidney autopsy? Pathology findings are not going to be consistent. Look, we could argue that until you're blue in the face. Yeah. The reality was he had some coronary artery disease and his heart was enlarged. So, and otherwise, why did he die? He had an arrhythmia. Yeah. He collapsed. Why? Narcotics, op opioids, which are narcotics, amphetamines, insulin. I mean, they're all up there. What's in what's called the differential diagnosis, Ron. That's why when I do the videos, like I'm, unless you're another pathologist or a doctor, but you can't argue us. Yeah. You know, I throw in the anabolic stuff because I'm the anabolic doc. <laughs> but I mean, Rich, Rich, certainly sooner or later would be suffering uh, with the cardiovascular complications that I see every day, Ron. Yeah. In large parts, early heart failure, kidney disease. I don't want to say names, but if you watch my video. There's a gentleman that's an incredible, famous powerlifter that came forth, signed all the disclaimers, and he did a video with me right here in this office. He's, 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 he's on the way to, to dialysis. Hopefully, we're going to reverse that, though. Wow. He openly talks about it, Ron. Hmm. Steroids hurt the organs. Who's going to argue me? I mean, we're the bodies, people. <laughs> we got the bodies now. Yeah. Sometimes the bodies walk in to see me, though. Huh. Do they have to be dead bodies, Ron? Well, it's usually to catch people's attention. They do have to be dead. You're right. <laughs> you are right. Well, now we got a couple. I hope, and unfortunately, and it's, I mean, Jesus Christ, I don't want to see any more, but I mean. We will. Yeah. We're we going to see more. Uh, you know, you touched, we talked about body dysmorphia and something that's not a steroid, it's not technically even a drug, but, you know, Piana had a lot of something in his arms and shoulders, speculated to be that PMAA. Wow, and I'm yeah. sure you, there's a lot of, I don't know a lot, but there's a lot of guys putting oil and stuff in their arms and their shoulders. Have you treated any of these people? And what are some of the dangers yeah. that, that could be associated with that? So, so that stuff, and I'm, I'm remembering it too, because again, I'm an expert in steroids, not the synthol and stuff. Yeah. So let me tell you something. That that stuff is a plastic derivative used in Europe in Latin America, I believe, for yeah, for body enhancing. I think he first did it because he had a, he had a divot, yeah. and it's and he first. And then, obviously, he used more and more, and I think he received it from outside the country. Yep. And uh, he went overboard. I don't know. Now, if you read into that derivative, what that organic plastic is, it probably it might have leached out into his circulation system and deposited in his heart and caused the arrhythmia. Hmm. Now, wow. I didn't put that in my – my social media team told me, don't put that in. You're, <laughs> this is for you. Yeah. Matt, great, best guy in the world. Don't put that in because you're going to get so much hate on that because that sounds so crazy. I said, it's a hypothesis, but it's going to be multifactorial. So those drugs, so yes, Ron, that stuff scares me 
who wouldn't want to do a little? I mean, for the rear end or Let for me tell the. You. I, look, I mean, I, I've had, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, my story. Story, that that's been my lagging body part since day one, since you know the '80s, and I've been tempted many times to put crap in my arms because my legs are, they're crazy, but my arms, hmm. But I'm, I just know deep in my heart. It's just not safe. Putting all that crap in there, where's it going to go? What's going to happen to it years it down does. the line? I don't know, and I don't want to find out the hard way. Right. So, 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 Synthol, I did an article actually on this. I have there's so many articles now where I can't remember all my articles. I did an article on Synthol, and, you know, because I do see it, though, Ron. So to answer your question, sorry I launched off there. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, I do see it. I see it more, and, and, and I, I see just the abscesses from it. I mean, have you seen those men in the other countries in Brazil yeah. and, the, and the, the, the Russian kid with the arm? Yeah. So I haven't seen that, knocking on wood. But I've seen, I've seen men that are using it more. And, oh, my Lord, but, Ron, that's, that's body dysmorphia. Oh, I'm well aware. I mean, I don't think anyone other than there's, uh, you know, I say there's two, peop two types of people that get into bodybuilding. One are the... The people that are just naturals at it, they're just genetic freaks. It came easily to them, and people said, you got to do this, and they were successful, and they kept going. They didn't come to bodybuilding out of any type of insecurity or bad, poor body image or anything like that. But I believe the vast majority of bodybuilders do come from that camp where yeah. we were skinny as kids, we weren't good athletes, we couldn't get attention from girls. It's, you know, build up the body, as an, build up this fake gorilla suit, this armor, to turn yourself into this you know, image of what you wish you could be. And obviously steroids are going to do that better than not using steroids. Uh, so I don't, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. I mean, I, Harrison Pope commented on me in one of his uh, TV specials one time. Uh, wow. Part of a group of people that were, I let a news crew follow me around one day in the gym, which was a bad idea. But anyway. <laughs> Great, Ron. Uh, I want to switch, switch gears here because so many guys are on steroids. And men in general don't like going to the doctor, no offense, but that's how men are. Yeah. They don't like to go to the doctor. They ignore problems until it's too late. Like my late father, he, he had cancer, didn't say a word to anybody about this horrible pain. By the time he was diagnosed, he had six weeks to live. You know, I don't know how much longer he would have lived otherwise, but steroid users, where a lot of us are in denial, we don't want to know what's going on, but what type of testing should we be demanding of ourselves, go get done, and how frequently should we be getting this done? Well, that that's Ron. What a what a big piece. On my web, there's a, we have a new website coming out where I'm actually listing all all the all the, the labs. Okay. I'm, I'm it's going to be listed. So it's obviously you, you should go to a caregiver and you should hopefully they're going to be a, a professional caring internist or a, a family practitioner or a GP and you're going to get a history done. Check your vital signs, blood pressure. And then you should check your, your labs, the CBC, right, for the red blood cells, your kidney function, your liver function. Of course, if you're on and off steroids, you should check a testosterone. Probably young guys, but they should check a prostate. I mean, it's all, it's the basic stuff, though, Ron. It's the basic stuff. It's the organs, the internal organs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really the heart, the liver, and the kidney. I mean, look at those men. Look, look at those autopsies. And that's what, that's what, in the end, common things are common, and I teach that in the med school. So you should go for the common issues. And if a man has early coronary disease, again, these are for women too, Ron, but I mean, yeah. this is more men. Men have heart disease earlier than women naturally for other reasons, and it manifests. And then it's superimposed on the fact that they don't go to doctors, and then you put it on steroids, Ron. Yeah. So... So heart-based studies, CBC, Comprehensive Metabolic Panel, I'll always love a hemoglobin A1C for the diabetes and prediabetes to check that. Urinalysis, see how the kidneys are functioning. All these patients that I pick up, they have protein in the urine. They have, they have renal failure starting. It's, it, the creatinine is elevated. Is it real? Is that because they're taking supplemental creatine derivatives? And that the estimated GFR is actually false, hmm. falsely elevated? Or a suppressed, excuse me, the creatinine's up. It's an inverse relationship. Ron, this is all I do. But I'm giving, on my new website, um, and my articles, I'm going to give a list of what labs 
should be done. But it, it, it's it, but then the, but Ron, then they're gonna they're gonna start diagnosing themselves. Is my hematocrit really high? Yeah. Is is this kidney <laughs> function? They're, Ron, they're gonna. I mean, this is come on. This is like 13 years I've been doing this. Why my book is out? That's why I'm gonna. I have clinics. Yeah. We're expanding. I have a license in Florida, so we're opening up in South Florida. I'm not leaving Connecticut, people. Don't get upset. Don't get scared. <laughs> we're expanding. There are. I'm training physicians as we speak. We're going to expand the metabolic doc clinic. Yes, we're going to be in South Florida, probably West Palm Beach. Oh, okay. So why wouldn't I? So yeah, exactly. Well, beats the weather. I mean, you're not that far from where I am in Boston. The weather's miserable this time of year, as you know. I don't blame you. So, but this is—it's going to be—it's going to be. It's going to be the, 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 I'm letting it out on the website coming out in about two weeks. They're going to see on, on the on the clinical aspect and on the consultation areas. I'm going to listing the labs that yeah. people should get, and then but they're going to have to take the labs, Ron, to to a doctor. <laughs> to, I, I mean, again, I'm just trying. I'm trying not to be a funny guy. I'm trying not to be a wise guy anymore. Yeah. I'm trying to be more. Try, trying not to be, you know, the angry guy that I was ten years ago because apparently I was really angry and I was more aggressive. I do remember I that. Yes. I do remember that. In the, in the, I got that from the articles. But so TRT is it's it's gained a lot more acceptance in the medical community. I think over the past what would you say 10, 20 years, very yeah. gradually. What are some of the stigmas you still see or challenges you still see with get with it getting? Widely accepted because I'm of the belief that anyone who's over 40, if whatever, if you're a middle-aged guy and you have low T, and this can improve your quality of life, why shouldn't it be available to you? But Ron, but Ron, here's the good news on this. No one's arguing. Doctors, doctors are just too busy. Hmm. They're, 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 they're not. They don't. They may not want to deal with it. Yeah. Because there's risk factors. It says heart attack, Ron. Two years ago, three years ago, the feds put a risk, an increased risk on testosterone products. Yeah. Heart attack, stroke, and death. What what doctor wants to deal with that? You're they're laughing because it's true. Well, it and then, like and the then last a year, box. Box last year, I mean, are those? It, hold on, but it, we'll have another article and another debate where we're going to actually, and I have my, I actually have videos on this where we talk about the data from 2013, 2014, that how the feds came to that and the politics. So, but, but, so what doctor in his right mind that's a regular great, I'm on their side. I'm supporting these guys. They're seeing 40 people a day, Ron. Wow. Come on, up to 40 a day, GP guys. Endocrinology guys are busy with diabetes. Hmm. They, they really don't. I'm not saying all endocrinologists, but most endocrinologists don't know really, they're not experts in testosterone. Yeah. Because they don't do it as much as I do. They're, they're doing diabetes more. I'm not a full-blown expert. I'm not an endocrinological expert in diabetes. I'm an internist, so I'm pretty good in diabetes. Yeah. But how can I say I'm the best in diabetes when I'm not board-certified endocrine guy? Mm. So, so it's, it's TRT. If you're a man and you have low testosterone and you're diagnosed with low hypogonadism, from what? From what? From, from from diabetes and from, from organic causes because you've got to understand why you have it. Now, how many men have anabolic steroid related hypogonadism? Pretty much That's every man I, my age that I know does. So, so, so but well, no, from steroids causing low T. So, di so testosterone gonadism, hypogonadism, low T has to be diagnosed. You have to give an explanation for why they have it. Are they truly legitimately low? And then can you have to talk about the management and then there are doctors that do it, and yeah. and men, there are a lot of men that are doing great, and you have to watch the heart and the prostate and the gynecomastia and all the, the acne and all the, the moods and all this kind of, and then at the end of the day, you just watch them. That's what I do, though, Rob. That's my day job, yeah. and that's why we're trying to expand, but I'm expanding very slowly and safely with evidence-based guidelines, and there's no treatment of any patient. I only treat men that need testosterone, Ron. Yeah. There happens to be a lot of them. Right. Oh, I'm sure. So do you get a lot of, you know, maybe not a lot, but do you also get patients who are, they're heavy steroid users and they have no intentions of not doing that anymore, but they want to be doing it in the healthiest way possible. Is, are there safer ways to do it? Oh, boy, you're, that's a controversial question, Ron. Yeah. So, so that's, I'm called the career wrecker. <laughs> wow. What a title. I'm, 
So what I do for those men is this, and those women, but, but for, it's, it's, it's 99 men, one woman. Yeah. I show them, Ron, I show them that I do the history. Yeah. I answer their questions. I don't discriminate. I listen to their, I listen to them as a healer. I do a physical exam. I do the labs, right? Yeah. We can't show you lab. Look at your labs, ma'am. Look at your labs, sir. Yeah. You can make your own decision, sir. Hmm. What kind of reactions? Respect, do you, what kind of reactions do you get? Great reactions only. Hmm. No one, you know, I cost a few dollars. I cost a few bucks, right? Yeah. So people don't pay me money to waste their time. Yeah, yeah. true. So I, I answer their questions. I tell them what I feel comfortable in doing, and therefore what I'm not comfortable in doing, but I always respect them. Yeah. And I give them a prognosis of where they may be heading based on being the anabolic doc. Cool. Okay. And then and people walk out and shake my hand, and I may never see them again. But at least you, you did everything you could do to give them the right option. It's very, it's very straightforward. There's no, there's no need to break any laws or for me to just, I don't need to put my license at risk. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to get to just a couple questions from the MD forum because I, I let these okay. guys ask questions. Uh, a guy named House, he wants to know, is it unhealthier to put on muscle at a rapid rate, i.e. oxygen gym style? Uh, you know, these people have been going to Kuwait and they'll put on 20, 30 yeah. pounds of muscle in the course of months. Or is it the same as getting to that size over many, many years? So he wants to know if doing it that much faster is more dangerous. What a great question. My, my, there's no, I don't have any data for that question. Mm. But my, my, my gut feeling tells me, my anecdotal feeling is it's yeah. probably dangerous. But if you're super young, the body, how much can it take? You know, but again, it's enlarging the heart. It's all going to be cardiac. Hmm. It's all going to be cardiac related, you know, renal related. The liver can take in a, a massive amount of abuse. I mean, is this what you want to do to your body? You know, see, it's all, I'm going to probably have the same question for everything. I mean, we don't know, Ron. Hmm. And if you, if you, if I have a 27 year old man that did steroids for about six years, he had a massive heart attack. Wow. Now, what is that? It's bad genes with steroids. Right. I mean, so someone's goes. The argument will be, well, it was genetic. He had a predisposition. He was going to have a heart attack anyway, but it probably wouldn't have been at age twenty six, twenty seven. That's it would have it's, been it's it's, 40 it's or called, fifty years old. It's called premature. Yeah. So it accelerates steroids. Certainly, in my opinion, because there's really limited data for it, but there's data that testosterone maybe accelerates coronary disease. Now, I think that's controversial. I don't know if that's true or not. I take it on a man-per-man -man basis. If you have bad family history as a man, which means your dad or your mom, mainly the dad, had a bypass surgery in his 40s, I better wake up and perk up and, and watch your heart closely. And if your HDL naturally is low, and then you're on testosterone and steroids and anadrol and everything else, I've seen, I've seen HDLs single digits and not even measurable hmm. that's what this kid this kid had wow and and i've seen many i've seen hundreds of heart attacks and stents placed but so it's all gambling in vegas but it's all what when, when i so answering your other question yeah if i could if i could give an addendum to that sure. when when i do a history and physical and i see a man that i know i know is going to have a heart attack I, I say to him bro you know you're definitely playing with fire. Hmm. And if I see a guy or a girl who has great genetics and really no risks that are there, I say, you know what? Sooner or later, you're probably going to have some problem. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's not going to be tomorrow or within the next five or ten years, but maybe twenty or thirty years, and then we're just we're on a, a a slate of time that we just can't predict. Yeah. And I think most people, if you tell them something's going to happen twenty, thirty years from now, they're like. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Twenty thirty years. That's the that's a that's the problem with the young kids, right? And we were probably the same way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one more question. I think this is something I I've never gotten a medical opinion on, so I'm curious. The bubble gut. This comes from a guy named R. Roberto. Uh, it's he says 
is it caused by oversized organs or which class of drug? Is it GH insulin? Is it visceral fat? Uh, he says if you have a 10 pound liver, the gut will protrude. So there's been all this speculation. What's causing big guts? Insulin. insulin. Growth hormone. I mean, I just got to be I mean, come on. I mean, well, it's multifactorial. And, you know, you'll see, I did a lot of research on this. I think some other. Someone interviewed me on this. I forgot where. I get a lot of stuff going on, and I told him it's insulin. I mean, it just—it's insulin, and it's the multifactorial use of growth factors with insulin. That's it. I mean, if I have to give my two-second answer, yeah. So, you know, those two things. You know, I can't. I, you can't really answer this yes or no. But I mean, can can we have modern bodybuilding with the standards that are expected of these? competitors in 2018 can we have that look without those two drugs i i don't know if they wow can. you know ron this is why you know you guys are going to have me back yeah I, I'm t I told you what my agenda is i'm going to be questioning the judges hmm. i'm going to be questioning everyone what yeah. what are we doing because the standard is set by the judges and ron i'm a power lifter i'm a little little baby power i'm a little i'm a 195 pound man <laughs> i just like to lift things up and put them down only in bodybuilding would 195 pounds be considered a little, but okay. <laughs> but I mean, but come on, but you run, it's funny. But yeah. it's it's not funny in that, I mean, I don't know. I think sooner or later, the drug, oh my, I mean, we just have to question it. Is it are these real, are these warriors? I hear this warrior mentality yeah. that I'm a warrior. I will die when I'm 40. Wow. I mean, what an well, insult pun, to I mean, actual people that fought in wars, I would say, for one thing. Well, I know. Well, that's another thing. I mean, I just have so much respect for the mil our military yeah. and police I'll, in this country. I'll dare you compare yourself to what they do. But, but I've heard this, though, Ron. You've probably seen that out there. So it, it's it's unfortunately, you know, and we've got to be careful because I have an 11-year-old son, and, like, they ga they're gamers, and they're doing this incredible social media and gaming, and I don't know what's happening that – you want to actually look and be like a walking, talking avatar. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Ron. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, for you know, it's really, I really want to get into Arnold. I want to talk to him. I want to get him on the show. I want to say, you know, from Arnold's day to now, mm -hmm. like, what are we doing? What are we? What are we going to do? I mean, yeah. absolutely, classic. At least, yeah. I don't know, Ron. No, okay. sure. Well, I mean, uh, you know, just as a little side note there, I believe Classic Physique was created uh, as almost like a restart where bodybuilding went too far. Yeah. We're not going to get rid of it, but we're going to start this other division that's toned down and they have little wastes and whatever drug use there is, it's not as apparent and it's probably not as extreme and it's a healthier look and these guys probably technically are healthier. But we're gonna It's a great keep, start. Yeah, and we're going to keep bodybuilding, but... You see how quickly classic is. It's just exploding in popularity so fast. It's it's a look look. I, I'm trying to be positive. You know, it's like a deal cutting. We have to cut deals here, right? Yeah. So it's a good start. Yeah. True. Sure. Okay. Well, you've been incredibly generous with your time, doctor. I know you saw a ton of patients today. Appreciate you taking all this time to talk to us. Very excited you're coming back to write for MD. I'm sure a lot of people are psyched to hear that because you, your column was very popular. I'm glad it's coming back. Uh, more and more involved. Any involvement on the web, on the site, anything is going to be so great, so welcomed. Uh, the book is again titled "Is America on Steroids?" And, yeah, "America on Steroids: A Time to Heal" by the where, Anabolic Doc. And where where do people find this in two weeks? This is going to be actually on on my website. It's going to be on the website in about two weeks, and the web they can go to anabolicdoc.com. Yep. Or metabolicdoc.com. Anabolic doc or metabolic doc. Okay. Straightforward. And they can buy that and download it immediately and start reading. Yes. Yeah. Well, well it's going to be not digital. It's going to be for print first. Okay. And then that we're going to we have. I just have so much stuff where I'm overloaded now. You know. I mean, I'm right. trying to. I'm trying to see the patients, and they're always number one. Yeah. You know, I got a family, and then I got the book. We have the articles. I want to write for you guys, so. You can see we're sitting in a dark room right now. I got I got a lot of patient notes and charts on the desk here. But Ron, I can't thank you enough. It, it's it's I need to say it. Musk, I was the anabolic doc first, and Steve Blackman and Muscular Development definitely found me back in the day. 
and launched me off. I took the training wheels off. Hmm. And it's, it's just it's humble to come back, and, and I'm going to do the best thing I can with my resources and time to, um, to write for you guys and spread the word, and, of course, stay strong and healthy. Awesome. Thank you very much for the Ron Line Report. This has been me, Ron, with the Anabolic Doc, Thomas O'Connor. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much.